Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. I'm Governor John Carney here in uh, Newcastle, Delaware. Uh, just to give a quick, quick update uh, on the COVID-19 pandemic situation here in our state and, and to be here at Newcastle County headquarters for our public safety uh, departments uh, to recognize a drop of personal protective equipment that's so necessary to our first responders, our health care workers uh, across our state, and really is important to enabling all these workers to deliver the life-saving circumstances, life-saving services that they provide. I'm here with uh, our county executive, Matt, Matt Meyer, who's who's joining us. Thank you, Matt, uh, for your leadership and for uh, the leadership and service of the people, uh, the public safety folks the, that uh, that are under your command. We also have Mark Logeman here is the chief of EMS. Uh, thank you for your service and the service of your men and women, women and Dr. Rick Hong, the medical director of DPH, uh, who you'll hear for, from in a minute. We're here this uh, Monday morning expecting that the next uh, two weeks are going to be very challenging here in the state of Delaware as the number of positive COVID-19 cases increases and importantly, the number of hospitalizations increase. As of yesterday, we had 673 individuals who tested positive for COVID-19. We had 101 Delawareans who were hospitalized and 125 uh, people with uh, positive COVID-19 tests who were in our hospitals across the state here in Newcastle County Kent County and Sussex County. 25 of those uh, patients are critically ill and 14 have passed away. We've uh, been expecting a surge in the, the number of positive cases of COVID-19 here in Delaware. For several weeks now, we've been planning for a surge in hospitalizations and trying to make sure that uh, all the hospitals have the resources that they need uh, to meet that surge. And when you think of what that means, it's essentially making sure that uh, you're focusing on those uh, limiting factors in that equation. So it's a calculation of the number of hospital beds that you have, the number of ICU units, intensive care units that you have, the number of ventilators that you have to service the most critically ill of those patients, and most importantly, probably as we've calculated uh, those limiting factors, the personnel who were available to deliver those life-saving services. And so you can have all the ventilators that you need, but if you don't have the respiratory therapists, if you don't have the nurses, if you don't have the physicians uh, to operate and tend to those, uh, operate those, that equipment and tend to those patients, then you're not going to be able to save those lives. And so we've had, as I said, 14 people have passed away, no new deaths over the weekend. Sadly, most of those who've passed have been our elderly senior citizens here in our state. And we have increased our focus on protecting nursing homes in which those senior citizens reside to make sure that we have, they have uh, practices in place to uh, prevent the virus from getting into the facilities, cut down all visitations to those uh, facilities and making sure that the workers there and employees uh, follow appropriate high, personal hygiene and, and social distancing. One of the most challenging things that we've done had to do over the last several weeks is to reduce the social activity, the number of groups, large groups in the public, closing down beaches and parks and restaurants and bars, limiting gatherings most recently uh, to 10 or fewer, and really trying to get the message out that everybody needs to exhibit and practice social distancing six feet apart from one another uh, to protect uh, each of us from the virus. It's clear that your activities affect your neighbors and your neighbors' activities affect you. 
We've had some challenges with our neighbors from other states, from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, coming to Delaware mostly to do activities that we're discouraging here in our state and requiring our own citizens to stay at home, to shelter in place, and only to leave their homes for essential activities. And so we've had to uh, set up roadblocks uh, on our borders to question those folks coming from other states as to the business they're, they're about here in, in, our, in our state. Our ability to enforce social distancing and our ability to get the message out that this is so critically important for every Delawarean to exercise caution, to keep themselves safe and their neighbors safe will depend, will determine uh, our ability to meet the surge uh, that we're, we're expecting over the next several weeks. We've seen what's happening in the state of New York and New York City. We're seeing what's happening in Pennsylvania and New Jersey with respect to that surge. And we, we expect a similar type surge relative to the population of our state over the next uh, two weeks. And so this equipment drop today uh, that we're here to recognize is really important for the EMS uh, workers and employees who are going to wear these gowns, the masks, the N95 resp respirators, and hoods that uh, are being delivered today from the Division of Public Health who receive the, this equipment from the National stockpile. You have seen, I'm sure heard on TV, the difficulty that the federal government has had in meeting the needs of, of local governments. And when you think about response to an emergency situation, everything we're doing is executed at the local level. And so our thanks go out to our first responders, our EMS and ambulance personnel, our law enforcement officials, who are on the, on the streets every day, and to our hospital and healthcare workers who out, are out there treating patients and uh, doing so in such a way that will save lives and, uh, and doing it in a safe and sound way. Our ability to protect them depends on our ability to flatten the curve, that is to reduce the spread of COVID-19 virus by protecting appropriate uh, safety measures that have been re recommended by the CDC. At our, our decision-making level, and A.J. Shaw, the director of DEMA, has been doing a tremendous job working with our hospitals, with our uh, local governments, um, has, ha and with uh, local responders. He has been managing the situation at the state level. And again, you talk about execution at the local level, management at the state level, and support at the federal level. We have a, in fact, I have a, a conference call later this morning with the White House and Vice President Pence as we talk about the needs of states across our country, and every state is a little bit different. Our needs here in Delaware are the same uh, as other states, but also the situation here uh, is, is different as well. One of the most important limiting factors is this personal protective equipment uh, that we're recognizing in this drop today. So with those as some opening uh, remarks, I'd like to turn the podium over to our county executive, uh, Matt Meyer, and to uh, thank him and, and his team and all the first responders, EMS, uh, and, and uh, Newcastle County Police for their service, uh, an important service they're providing on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, uh, Governor. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming today. Uh, thank you, uh, Governor Carney is, uh, as we say, burning the candle on both sides of the stick. I know it's uh, very early mornings uh, and very late nights in the interest of keeping all of us in this state safe. So I want to say Thank you. I know there are so many constituents who've talked to me about it who don't have the opportunity to tell you how grateful they are for the tremendous work you're doing uh, trying to keep everybody safe, every single Delawarean. And that is appreciated. And we have another example of it in all these boxes right behind me. As Governor Carney said, 
Uh, this is an effort that's state managed, locally executed, and federally supported. And these boxes behind me are a fantastic example of that. Statistics coming out of Italy show that as many as 12% of healthcare workers, that's one in eight uh, um, of the individuals who tested positive for COVID-19 were healthcare workers, first responders, doctors, nurses, paramedics, police officers on the front lines. And I think we all know our, our acting paramedic chief Logeman is here, our police chief Colonel Bond is here. And we know that if we were to remove one out of every eight of our uh, uniformed service members from duty and everyone who's been exposed to those individuals, it would have a dramatically negative impact on our service to the public on that local execution. So we cannot thank Governor Carney, the state and the federal government enough for making sure that our first responders have the personal protection equipment that's needed when they go out there on those calls. I wanted to mention a couple other things that you can do to keep our first responders and everyone safe. As Governor Carney has reiterated time and time again, please stay home. Please do not go outside unless you absolutely need to. If you're, if you're older in a more vulnerable situation, immunocompromised, make a phone call. Make sure somebody else can get you the necessities, those things that you need. Do everything you can. It's hard for me. I know Governor Carney is talking about it. Don't touch your face. Do everything you can to not touch your face. If you need to touch your face, wash your hands or sanitize before and after. When you do that, you keep yourself, your family, our community safe. You keep our first responders safe. A second thing that maybe you haven't heard that much about is if you have a first response call, if you call 911, please disclose, please talk about those issues that you're having. As has been reported this morning, there are, there are issues out there. We've had events where there are individuals who have not disclosed that they've tested positive for COVID-19. That information will not impact the quality of our service to you. You will get high quality service regardless of what pre-existing conditions you, you have when you call 911. But it helps us to keep all of our first responders, including those members of the fire service, safe. So let me just close by uh, thanking again uh, those first responders who are out there every day, police officers, paramedics, our 911 uh, call takers who are right upstairs behind me, uh, and our doctors and nurses. And let me turn it over to our acting chief of paramedics for Newcastle County, the largest paramedic service in the state of Delaware, Mark Logeman. Thank you very much, Executive Meyer, uh, Governor Carney. Certainly we're dealing with some unprecedented times here. And in order to deal with this virus, it's truly a team effort. Um, as has been said by the county executive and the governor, we're talking about a team effort with everybody, every citizen uh, of this country uh, doing what's needed to uh, contain the spread. It's also a team effort uh, within the first responder community. I wanna recognize our law enforcement partners, certainly uh, the fire service throughout the state of Delaware who are out there doing their uh, job every day as they normally do. However, in this, uh, in this age, they're taking the appropriate precautions. And I uh, ask everyone to have patience with them as they, uh, they do take these precautions. Things might seem a little different, but we're out there and we're responding. I wanna thank uh, Governor Carney and the County Executive for their leadership through all of this and their continued mission of, of my division and all first responders here in Delaware which is to respond to the calls for help for the citizens uh, of the state and uh, Newcastle County in particular. Uh, Newcastle County uh, EMS, we've been in direct contact with the State Division of Public Health uh, Office of EMS and Emergency Preparedness on a daily basis. They have been providing us with uh, up-to-date uh, methods in which we can control the spread and methods in which we can uh, deal with uh, people who are suspected of and are diagnosed with COVID. And uh, we have great gratitude to them and uh, enjoy the great team uh, effort uh, that's being provided. In closing, the one thing I want to ensure everybody is that the services that we provide, all the first responders here in Newcastle County, we're going to continue to uh, respond to your calls for assistance. Uh, we're going to do that today. We're going to do it as this uh, 
circumstance gets uh, worse, and then we're going to continue to do it, uh, God willing, when it's all all complete. Yeah. Thank you. At this point, uh, I'll turn the podium over to Dr. Hong, from, uh, who is the medical director for the Department of Public Health, uh, State of Delaware. Thank you. And good morning, everyone. Uh, before I start, I just have to comment on the incredible teamwork that, that is here today. I mean, not just with first responders, but also, as mentioned, the local, state, and federal levels. Uh, so it's really my pleasure to be part of the team. As a board certified in emergency medicine and EMS physician, I would like to express my appreciation to all the first responders in the state of Delaware for their continued service during this pandemic. Your safety is a priority, and I would like to thank our federal partners for their continued support during our response with this shipment of personal protective equipment, or PPE, one of several deliveries from the Strategic National Stockpile to Delaware as a good example. Until the PPE supply chain returns to normal, however, we all must continue to conserve PPE as much as possible, as well as optimize its usage so that those at highest risk of exposure while performing their duties to the public will have access to it. Also as a reminder, and has been reiterated already, we ask the public to access 911 or Mercy Department services when medically necessary, and please be transparent with your medical needs, your symptoms, and if you tested positive for COVID-19, for we will all suffer if these resources are no longer available. Thank you for your time. So I'd like to close it out before taking a, a few questions uh, with a thank you, a real, really heartfelt thank you to all the members of this team. As, as all the speakers have mentioned, it is an incredible a team effort. Uh, it's an effort that's executed, as we've said, at the local level. It's managed at the state level. And Dima's doing it, and A.J. Shaw are doing a tremendous job of doing that, working with the Department of Public Health and supported at the federal level and the, the equipment that we're receiving today uh, is part of that. I'd also like to remind everybody that everybody can do their part and everybody needs to do their part. We are, we like to refer to our state as a state of neighbors. And we are, we're small, we know one another, we know one another as neighbors. And in this very difficult time, we need to think about uh, the fact that our actions affect our neighbors and that our neighbors' actions affect us. And so we have to follow the rules as the county executive laid out in terms of a appropriate uh, personal hygiene and social distancing, stay at home unless you have to leave your house for an essential services, and just be conscious of your neighbor and people who are around you. We're gonna encourage people to start uh, wearing masks as the CDC has recommended at the federal level, more to protect others than to protect those who, who wear the mask. So, I just want to thank everybody for making this happen in our state and ask everybody to be safe over the next two uh, weeks as we and beyond as we expect a surge uh, in the number of cases, uh, positive cases here in Delaware and hospitalizations. And with that, we'll take a few questions. Yes, sir. What is the surge supposed to be? I mean, any estimates? Yeah, so we've got a number of estimates that are based on uh, a projection that we and a model that we've gotten from FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. I think it's been it's been uh, published in, in your newspaper. Uh, we look at a modeling that uh, we have a working group of scientists from UD, from the hospitals and from the public health working on our old model, our own model. And so there's a range of needs for hospital beds. That's what we really focus on. The need for critical care, hospital beds, and ventilators to serve the, the most critically ill. That's the life-saving equation, and we're seeing in other states uh, that they're having that challenges. So it's been reported a, an estimate of uh, maybe 500 or so or more of those beds. Could go up to 1,000 based on your assumptions. And uh, we're at 673 as of yesterday with respect to positive cases, and we expect that to go into two, 3,000 or, or more. And as that ramps up, the need for those critical hospital services is going to ramp up as well. My focus has been on ventilators, but I've been educated by the healthcare professionals that if you don't have the staff 
to monitor those ventilators that's that's not going to do any good and if you don't have the personal protective equipment to put those staff on the front line again you're not going to be able to have the capacity to do what you need to to save people's lives and so we're looking at all those limiting factors to try to make sure that we we have a pipeline i feel pretty comfortable as of last week about our two-week supply of those uh, uh, that equipment uh, and ultimately of the ventilators but it will all depend on the success we're having in shutting down social gatherings and activity in our state because that will push it out a little bit and it will reduce the peak is what all the uh, epidemiologists tell us and so that's the guidance that we're following and that's the thinking that uh, that informs our decision making. Right now we have uh, 139 personnel. Uh, some of those are in training, but uh, we have the, the, I mean, as of today, we have our regular number that we would prior pre-COVID. However, you'd have to subtract uh, five or six people who are not currently in the workplace, secondary to potential exposure and the need to self-isolate and self-monitor. So Correct. Paramedics that are out there, not just training, that are actually out there? Uh, the, a portion of those are in training. Right now we have, in training, we have 22 that are in training. Also, those, those, with the governor's order, those who retired could come back if there was a service. Correct, correct. And we, we have contingencies in, in place. So um, we have alternate shift contingencies. We have how, how we model our paramedic response uh, con under, uh, under valuation for contingency and also per the governor's executive order, should things get to the point where our current staffing gets to critical levels, there is the ability to bring back, uh, say, re people who have re recently retired from service and, and put them back into service. Last question. Can I, can I just add something to that? I think it's an important thing to recognize, and it was something that Mark mentioned to me earlier, and that is that uh, calls for emergency service right now are down for other uh, situations. A lot of the calls we get on a regular basis are non-emergency in nature. And so those are down because people don't want to go to the hospital or emergency room as they should not, right, because of the, the risk there. And so that's actually kind of an unintended cons positive consequence of the COVID-19 pandemic situation and, there, and thereby uh, gives us inc increased capacity there. There's also a working group looking at personnel needs. Uh, Mark mentioned the fact that the executive order loosened licensing requirements to put people to work that otherwise wouldn't you know, meet those criteria. If need be, we've, we've got at least 50 school nurses who aren't, you know, the schools are closed right now, who volunteered to be part of that core. And we've got a team matching the needs with, with those volunteer services and other folks that could be put to work. That to me, at the moment, is, is the critical question. Is the, is the workforce necessary to provide the life-saving services? Over and above that, that equipment or along with that equipment, both ventilators and PPE, uh, to have those, the, the, those personnel to meet that surge. When is this stuff going to be distributed to people, the paramedics? This? I, mean, I ask because, I mean, we're having a press conference Correct. Correct. We we have we have a stock right now that we're closely monitoring, and uh, obviously on a daily basis is de decreasing, uh, which is why we made the request through the state to get uh, a resupply. Okay. So, the supply you see behind me is going to be pressed into service in the near in, in the near future. So the paramedics already have some. some Absolutely. Stuff. Right now, all first responders have the appropriate equipment. This is to supplement what we have uh, in expectation of of the surge of cases. Thanks. Uh, as uh, as uh, Acting Chief Logeman mentioned, we are monitoring it very closely. E yesterday, I believe it is, the police command staff looked out and they said, we're fine for now for the 
next week or two or three. But beyond that, they weren't sure. And with limitations on supply, uh, they sent out uh, something on social media saying, hey, here are the type of masks we need. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, but I think after 12 hours, you had to cut it off and tell people enough because there was such an incredible outpouring of support. And it's important to note this sort of from the federal government through the state government is so valuable, but it's also been valuable to us, as I know it has been to the governor and the state, the tremendous of outpouring of help for healthcare workers on Facebook, people at home making masks to make sure not just our first responders, our, our paramedics, police and fire are served, but people like at the Easter seals at 501c3s at, at um, you know, Meals on Wheels, they need PPE too. And so that's been uh, an impressive asset, you know, people coming together. So, so again, to that, that point, we've been monitoring this supply uh, on a regular basis, a week to week basis, really figuring out, do we have enough for this week, next week and beyond? And as I said earlier, we have, we feel pretty comfortable with our supplies of, of testing of PPE uh, for the next kind of week or two. And, and in some cases, a little bit beyond that. Deliveries like this give us additional cushion as we go forward. Uh, obviously, we don't want to hoard this necessary equipment that could go to other states because the, the surge seems to be rolling differently through the country, uh, through more difficultly at, in New York now, we'll be maybe Philadelphia kind of next, we'll be sometime after that. And so people need the equipment at different times, if that makes any sense. And we're trying to keep track of that for, for uh, the first responders, healthcare uh, providers and workforce and the people of our state as well. Thank you all for coming. Stay safe.